We're going to make a standard 24 frame walk cycle. The first thing I do is go to the output properties and make sure the frame rate is 24 FPS. Then we can adjust the timeline so it ends on 24 frames and I'll just use the mouse wheel to zoom in a little bit here like so and then drag this bar to uh, get this highlighted portion into the center of this panel. Now you can see I've already added a few markers at the bottom like C1, D1, etc. And you can add these markers using this menu. So M to add marker and Control M to rename them. So these will be my poses. So this is contact and every three frames I'll use the arrow keys here to move forward. So one, two, three, I have a new marker. So one, two, three, new marker, and so on and so forth. And the interesting point here is at the end, on this marker, I'll do one, two, and three, and you'll see that this last one is outside of our range. So this is kind of important to get this thing to loop properly. Let's go to the animation tab. I'm going to switch things around a little. So I'm going to set this to be the graph editor. I will set this to be the dope sheet. This can remain the viewport and I'm just going to drag this to the side so it's as small as possible because we don't really uh, need this bit. Now let's go to the action editor in the dope sheet. All right, you select the dope sheet with this button and then you select the actions editor from within the dope sheet using the second uh, drop down menu here. So action editor and then use the mouse wheel to scroll to this bit here and then select new and this will be the name of our new animation so we're just going to call it walk walk cycle yeah let's put a number at the end and then i will uh, click here to make sure that this walk cycle gets saved when you close blender so it's kind of important to click on this back in the layout panel i'm going to go into pose mode and then I'm going to turn off all of these layers, okay? Um, and I'm just going to select the ones that we're actually going to use. So that will be the torso, the FK arms, and the IK legs. And we don't really need the root. Now, let me just uh, close everything here. Rig layers to the top. Rig main properties right underneath. Now I'm going to open this transform panel here and I'm going to select some of these controls like uh, like the foot IK control over here and I'm going to make sure that this value is XYZ Euler. Rigify will have this standard to Quaternion WXYZ but we're going to use the graph editor mostly to make our animation and Quaternions are difficult to understand when looking at a graph so we want to set this to be Euler. And similarly, I have set all of these controls that we're going to use to Euler. That'll just make it easier to make the make our animation. So you got it. You have to do this. I've already done this for for all of these controls. Now I can right click on this first frame for our animation and turn on recording by clicking on this little button here. Now I can go into orthographic view with the five key then one to get the forward view i'm just going to adjust the feet a, a little bit better but now when he's in a standing a pose the feet will be quite far apart but when you're walking the feet are much closer together much closer to this um, center line here so for male characters the feet will be kind of close to this line for female characters they might be right on the line or even overlapping it a little bit so the first thing we do is Click on this control, then G, lock on the X axis by pressing the X key, and then just drag it into place a little like so. And then I'm going to rotate it with the R key, lock it to the Z axis, and then rotate it like so. And maybe move it even closer to the center line. Now, you'll need to experiment with this for what looks uh, good enough. Now, I can do Control C, copy it, and then Shift Control V to get the other side. So now our feet are positioned somewhat um, 
like we want them to be. With this control still selected, I'm going to go into the side view and then I will just move it forward, G, lock it to the y-axis, and then I'm going to move it forward about here, I think. Just about there, and then move this back to be about over there. Now the feet will lift off the ground, obviously, but that's okay. The reason we're doing this is so you can have some idea of where to place the, uh, the torso control. So first of all, I'm just going to move this rotate this into position like so right straighten out the foot a little and then i can drag this uh, torso control down by locking it to the z-axis until i get a little bend in in the leg right so this is stretched too too much and right about there should be okay maybe a, a little bit more now i can just uh, rotate this into position as well so I, I get a, a bent leg like, like, like so. Okay, let me just turn off this transform panel and we want to have these two things um, expanded most of the time. Okay, so now I'm going to select the, these two controls and then these two controls. And I will do control C to copy it. All right, the cursor needs to be in the, in the viewport for this to work. And then I'll, I'll get the cursor over here to this last marker that is outside of our range and i'm going to right click on it to put the cursor over here and then with the mouse cursor back in the viewport i will do Control v to paste it all right so we copied this when the cursor was over here and then we pasted it over here and you'll see this bar that means that both of these keys are, are duplicates. Nothing has changed, which is usually a bad thing in animation. That's okay. Now, we're going to put the uh, cursor over here. Right click on C2, so that's the second contact position. And over here, I will do Shift Control V. And that'll paste a flipped pose. So what that means is that we start out over here with this foot forward, that foot back. But as we move forward in the timeline, by, by the time you get to the, to the second contact position, the feet have flipped. And then moving on again, the feet will flip again. So if I press the space bar, I can see this uh, initial animation uh, happening. So I'm just going to stop this, go back to the first frame go to the side view. Now we're going to work on the torso control, the positioning of the feet was really just so we can have a, a better understanding of where we want this thing to be. So first of all, when you're moving, you're slightly bent forward. So I'm just going to press R to rotate this and give it a slight forward bend. Okay, not, not, not too much, just a little bit. And we've already moved it down a little bit. Now we can select the pelvis control and I'm going to rotate this and lock it to the z-axis and then I'm going to move it so that the forward is, is positioned more towards the forward leg okay so um, let's see this from from the front right so here's here's the where the leg joins the pelvis and you can see that the socket is now more forward than it used to be and similarly the socket for this uh, leg is uh, towards the back now so that's one of the changes that we make to the pelvis the second one is that we will rotate it slightly to the side so it's bent to one side like so and you could see that the belt line has now moved so it's, it's kind of dipping that way and we rotated it like this, so this bit is a little bit forward and that's a little bit back. Okay, so back to the side view. And now we can select both the pelvis and the torso. So I'm just going to shift click on this and then do control C to copy it. So the first contact pose, take it to the end for the last contact pose and then control V. So we have, a, we have a duplicate, first and the last, and then in the middle, we can do Shift-Control-V to paste the flipped version of it. 
Now what that gives us is a, a movement on the pelvis in two directions. We're twisting it. So what, it favors one leg forward, but we're also dipping to one side. So, so the belt line will move uh, as the character is walking. So I'm just going to stop this back to the first uh, contact pose and to the side. Okay, I'm going to select this heel control. And if I drag on the timeline, you'll see it starts going back like so. But what I want to do is I'm going to select this frame. So this will be our down position. So this is the contact and then the down. So I'm going to do Alt R to remove the rotation on this so it's flat on the ground. And if, but if I move the, move it further along the timeline, you'll see it does something strange. It's, it goes right back up because in this contact position it's supposed to be up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the up position and remove the rotation from here as well. So from the down through the passing position to the up, it'll stay down. So right, so contact, it's up. Then on the down, it's on the floor. And then it stays on the floor to the up position. And then back to the contact position, it, it, it goes like so. Same for the other foot. So go back here for, for this one. We want it to Right? It'll be on this uh, contact position, then on down, it'll be on the, on the ground. And then if I put another, if I remove the rotation on the up position for this, it'll stay down for the entire duration from the contact position to the up, and then it'll move back to, to the contact position and move back up like so. So it was basically the same thing that we did for this control, but it's on the second half of the animation. Okay, so in the down position, so I'm just going to select this frame here, so that'll be four. I want to push this further down, so I'm going to grab it, lock it to the z-axis, and then bring it further down, right? So the heavier this character is, you really want to feel this, feel this impact on the ground like so. And then I'm just going to ignore the pass position. Uh, it's This is the up position. And this is the final contact pose. Now the up position needs to be higher than the uh, than the contact uh, position. So I'm just going to make a visual reference here. So this point is about over here. So in the up position, that point needs to be higher than that. And uh, that's not the only consideration. We also want to take a look at how how the leg is bent, and well, that'll kind of be informed by who your character is and what conditions he's walking in but that's for for another day right now i just want this point to be higher than it is in this uh, in this location and then i can just copy these over so i'm just going to copy this put this over there and then i'm going to copy this and put this on the second up position right so uh contact down passing position up back to contact and then the same thing repeats again you have another down another passing position another up and then the second contact so if you play this you can see it's kind of walking although really badly but we can improve that so i'm just going to stop this back to the first one now let's go to the animation tab i'm going to drag this window up like so and maybe move it a uh, bit over here like that go into orthographic view and the front view and I also prefer to have shading on okay now I'm going to select the pelvis control again and I'm going to expand this bit here now we don't change the scale on the on the pelvis control so we can just turn the scale off right because we're not using it we also don't add any uh, translation on the pelvis phone so we can turn that off and now we can look at these uh, graph values. They're color coded, so XYG is RGB, so red, green, and blue. X will always be red. So since we don't add any rotation on the X axis, you can see that this is a straight line and we can just ignore this, turn this off. And now we can, let me just select this bit here. So I, I prefer to visually 
verify what this value is doing. So if I press the G key and then move it, you can see its immediate effect on on the character. So this controls the the angle of the belt line, right? And this controls the overall twist of of the legs. So that way we can know what these values are doing. Now I can isolate either of these graphs by just doing Shift H. Well, so just select one so it's highlighted and then do Shift H to just isolate it that gets rid of the others. And now I'm going to expand this bit here. Go to Modifiers and then this uh, we have to select the first frame so the cursor on the first frame frame and then just add a cycles modifier right so this gives us a smooth incoming and outgoing graph so similarly on the y-axis let me just select this shift edge isolate it and then add a cycles modifier now what I'm going to do here is to select all of these key values and then press G and then 3. 3 will move it 3 frames forward. So that means that our new low point is on the down, right? So we just modified the animation without messing about over here in the viewport. So if you look at, if you bring back the, uh, the Z values, you can see that its high point was here and low was there while this thing is a, had a low point here and the high was over here, so we just modified it. Now if I play this animation, this actually looks more natural now because the because we updated the low point for, for the belt, belt movement. I can similarly dampen or amplify the entire track, so if I was to select all of these values here, like so, I can do S to scale, Y to lock the Y axis and then I can just move this entire uh, the entire thing so that it's really to one side or just dampen it so it's barely moving or even flip it around and right click to cancel so you can use this method to uh, dampen or amplify movement in your animation. Back in the layout panel let's go back into post mode. Now from contact to down if if i just uh, slide on the timeline you can see that this foot is now moving backwards and this foot moves forward but we don't want that to happen from contact to down we want both feet to move backwards so that this distance is maintained for, for, uh, for this duration so i'm just going to go to down well, let's just count the count the distance here. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, six squares here, half of this one and half of that one. So in down, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cancel this rotation. And then I'm going to rotate this entire thing like so. Uh, like so. And then move it back. So it has a distance of one, two, three, four, five, six and almost seven so maybe a bit forward and then perhaps just a little bit more all right like so moving forward onto the Pass position. Uh, don't want this to be. Yeah, we don't want any rotation on this control here. And I want this to be further up, like so. So I'm just going to look at the other side. And we don't need this to be too high off the floor, just, just clearing the floor so it's not in the way. And that looks good to me. Okay, and now we can just copy this, paste it on the other down with Shift Control V so it's flipped so it gets the other foot. 
and then the pass position copy this go to the other pass and then paste it flipped to so it's on the other foot and we don't really change anything on the up so that should be that and it's kind of walking now we can improve this quite a bit so let's work on that now let's look at it from the front so when we go to down I want to rotate it so it's more like or, or vertical right so straight up and then on the pass position I want to rotate this lock the Z axis move it like like so and then grab lock on the X axis and move this whole thing over there so like so then move it a bit more to the side I think like that and then it'll automatically come back and back on to the contact All right so we changed it down so copy on the other side control uh, control shift V and then we change the pass position so copy and on the other pass shift control V to paste flipped and now we have a modified animation there is one more motion we need to add to the torso control so I'm just going to select this okay so right now it's it doesn't move side to side so I'm going to go to the pass position uh, grab lock the x-axis and then just going to move it slightly like so so it's a bit just a tiny little bit to one side right then I'm going to copy this and paste it flipped so it it is to the other side on the other pass position now this is going to cause a bit of a problem uh, if we go into the animation I'm going to expand this uh, the torso control is selected here so these are tor torso graphs and I'm just going to find the X location and shift edge to hide it now because we were copy pasting all of the keys back and forth earlier we have some unwanted keys here all right so this is the pass position and this is the other pass and this is the contact so we don't want a key on the down or the up here so I'm just going to delete this uh, delete this one delete the key on the up right so we want to keep the contact delete the second down and delete the second up so this is all we want and we can also delete this one to get a really smooth graph here so playing this it now moves side to side the belt line is moving it's you know right now the movement might be too much okay so what we're doing here we just want to get the right movements in and then we can use the graph editor to dampen or amplify some parts so it looks good that's for later on we'll do the polish later on right now we just need to have something So we should also add a, a cycle modifier here so if you see this bit here contact second contact it's outside of our range so if we put a cycles here you'll see that this graph actually changes so the way it exits and enters uh, the keys within our range actually uh, changes based on whether or not there's cycles modifier so you should always add one when it makes sense our animation makes it a little bit better now if you play this from the contact to the down position if you look at this heel control you'll see it goes down 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 uh, but we want to make it go faster so what we can do is go into the animation and with the control selected we can look at its graph values on the X Euler rotation let me just isolate this with shift H I can select this bit here this key press T and make it linear so that'll make it go go down faster uh, similarly if I move the timeline forward go to the second contact position I can select this 
control here. Uh, select this graph, shift edge to isolate it, T, and make this linear as well. You can also move this key back by one if you want. So that would be just G and minus one to move it back one frame to make this go even faster. But I think I'll leave it as it is in this uh, video. Okay, back in layout, if I go into pose mode and we take a look at what this animation looks like, you can see that it does look like he's walking, especially with the perspective um, turned on it. This is not a half bad animation, even though there may be many shortcomings. But right now, all we want is a start, something that we can build on. So I think this works pretty well for the lower body. In the next video, we'll check out what the upper, how to make the upper body. So be sure to subscribe and like this video if you want more of this kind of content. And you know, if, uh, if you have any ideas on how to make this even better, write them down in the comments. I am myself just learning this stuff. So, you know, anything you have to say, anything you have to add, be sure to put them in the, uh, in the comments and like the video. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.